Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we are doing a community suggested app that is known as Olive. So Olive is a non-linear open source free video editor that is, you know, more of an alternative to Adobe Premiere. And this is also having features that you can get and also functions that you can get with tools like DaVinci Resolve. The only difference here is that this tool is more for CPU compared to DaVinci Resolve that actually harnesses the power of both CPU and GPU. And with that said, let's take a look at how you can get started with working with this tool. So with Olive open right here, you can see that the UI looks extremely simple. At the same time, it looks pretty plain for a tool that is for video editing. So first things first, you would notice right here is it has just this gigantic so, you know set of windows so this is for your project and this is your bin that where you get to load up certain things and you can choose to view these things in different forms actually we can go ahead and import certain images and that way you'll be able to get your content or your video footage or your clips directly here now if you want to create sequences you can right click and go over here and create a brand new sequence and within the sequence is where you can specify the preset type that has to do with the image or the video you know resolution that you want to work on right here we can see we have 1080 and you can actually go through and set this one however you want the sampling rate for the audio is also something you can proceed to check out and i'm just going to keep this at 24 frames per second and click on ok and from here we have our sequence right here and from here we can simply choose to bring in the bb8 and drag and drop this right over here so once we have this going we can press the playback button from here to get this happening or we can even press the space bar to get this one going now you might also be wondering what is going on around this part now within this part is where you can choose to work with the effects that is being applied to the clip and right over here has to do with the media viewer that has to do with the individual clip themselves so let's say for the nvidia video footage that we have here if we double click this right here we can be able to see this and we can simply slide across you know select a particular part and say all right maybe we want to get this part and we want to get another part out or let's say we just want to get only the video footage or we just want to get only the audio and if we simply click and drag we'll be able to extract only the audio and if we want the video just like you do in your you know your primary just like you do in premiere pro you can also drag this out and get the video footage as well so if you want to get started with you know things that you can play with if you go through the menu sections right here you see you have a couple of menus a couple of shortcuts and we're just going to get into some of the ones which i think you guys would definitely find interesting so if we go over to the tool menu we'll be able to go to the preference and from the preference we can change the language and also change the behavior of certain things so let's say we want to scroll in and out to be able to zoom we can actually set that one right here and I can go ahead and click on ok and when I do that I will be able to scroll in and out and zoom in you know and zoom out this is going to seriously help you know how you navigate across your clip some other thing which you can do as well is if you go over to the preference you can also choose to change the appearance of your ui so there is also certain appearances that are here and for you know the most part if you select any of these things you would need to restart the entire app over again before you can get the team to apply to this this is just one of the downside that i personally don't really like about it but despite that this is just ready to go so for the playback the playback is cool you can choose to change the upcoming frames how many seconds it gets to play and for the audio you can also change the audio input and output and right here which has to do with the keyboard is where you can change your setting now if you're thinking about working with a multi-display and you want to dock things up and down yes you can do that as we can simply click on this button right here to undock this all right and i really like to work in this mode which has to do with me having the clip menu which has to do with me having the clip viewer and the sequence viewer right here which has to do with me having the clip viewer and the sequence viewer side by side as this is much more of a standard approach for me and this is you know totally up to you guys and how you get to work with yours so within the timeline if i just simply scroll this all the way up you would notice that we do have a long set of things that we can work with now this is you know one of the parts that i like about this tool if you simply click right over here you can press c on your keyboard to activate the cut and this is actually very similar to some of these other apps you know that are paid and by simply clicking 
I can switch back and click right here, which has to do with the pointer. And you would also notice that once I click, I can separate these things apart. Now, if you're also working with the video footage, for example, we'll drag the RTX right over here. All right. So if we simply select this as it is, and we want to merge this as a group, we can simply right click and choose to combine this as a nested clip. All right. So by simply clicking on nested, it's going to automatically create a nested sequence, which we can now proceed to work with. Now for the linking as well, you would also notice that we have our audio and our video all linked up together. And this in its sense is, you know, very typical of any app you're working with. But what if you want to simply deduct the audio from the video? So what you can do is click on this object, right click, and you can simply unlink these things and move this to wherever you want. If you don't want to have this anymore, you can press the delete button to get rid of it. And while we're still talking about things that you can get rid of, let's also talk about how you can work with some of the tool sets that you have here. So one of the very impressive tool sets that I love and you know, that exists here is something that is very, very reminiscent of what you can have in Resolve. So let's say I I make a cut right here and if we simply you know play back our clip we can see our clip starts from this point and maybe what we want is we want our clip to start from this point all right and let's say you want this part to be the starting point of the clip how you can get this going if i simply move this all the way up is by simply selecting that i can go over and select on the slip tool and then we can use the slip tool to slide through to the points where we want. So let's say we want it to start from here and there you have it. You can have that going. Now this makes a lot of sense, but I really wish that, you know, over time they can update this so that you'll be able to see the thumbnail of what you're doing. Because if you're working with Resolve and other tools like that, this is also something that you'll be able to, you know, take a look at. And also still speaking about the timeline, you would notice that there are certain things that are not available here. So if I simply raise this all the way up, you would notice we don't have any, you know, hide, close, lock, and, uh, you know, solo buttons, those things don't exist. And if you also proceed to, you know, expand this one, which is existing here, you would also notice that they don't exist at all. So this is just one downside for, for this tool, but for sure it's an open source tool and all of these things are subsequent to update. If you go all the way to this point, which is the plus button, this is where you can add solid colors, bars, and titles. So if you're interested in adding titles, how you get this one going is click drag, and then you'll be able to, you know, have access to type in whatever thing that you want as the title. So let's say, for example, I want to work on a title like this. So all we need to do is select the title clip and click on edit text. And from here, you can choose to type whatever you want. So we are going to simply type the word olive. And with olive there, once you grab onto this and select it, you can change the size, you know, make some adjustments, do whatever you want. Click on OK and you would be able to notice that right here. Now, contrary to the Cadian Live where we talked about how you can work with this, you don't need to double click on this particular clip to get things up and running again. As once you select on the clip, you'll be able to have all of the properties and all of the effects that you might want to play with. So if I would like to change the position or update the text, I can simply change the position from here. And so this is very useful as you can also choose to select this clip from you know the viewport or from the viewer and position this wherever you want so real quick let's talk about transitions so if you want to add transitions you can actually select this clip so you can select the entire clip first of all or if you also want to see the thumbnail you can also stretch this all the way out so if you want to see the thumbnail just to make sure that you have the appropriate things going for you this is also something that you might actually find interesting to do so for this i can also choose to click right here and use this tiny button to reduce all right to reduce the clip and i can simply position this right here so right now what i want to do is select the both of them go over to this transition click on cross dissolve and i can apply cross dissolve across this so if i simply right click or you know come over here and click on the select button i can press the playback button and i'll be able to have that very nice and smooth you know transition happening 
in between this clip of course the cross dissolve which you added is a little bit too much and if this is also something you're looking forward to you can simply proceed to get this one going all right so let's talk about effects so for video effects if you want to get video effects going if you click over here so if you go over to this section that has to do with video effects you can start getting some very cool effects happening right here by default you just don't see the effects like you do in some apps so these effects are actually hidden so you need to click right here and then you need to select the effect based on the context that you want to work on. So if you want to distort things, you need to select the distort section and select a couple of things that you want to distort. If you want to key out some things like some, you know, chroma key and stuff, you can also do that. If you want to also stylize your clip, you can also add some effects that has to do with it. So for this example, we're going to simply click on chromatic aberration. And real quick, you would notice that we have some chromatic aberration effects going on here i can simply you know get the red channels to become a little bit more red and i can you know play with the green channel and do whatever thing that i want based on the chromatic aberration effect that we want to add if i want to take this off i can click on that button to get that off or click on the button to get it back on and for those interested in color grading you can also do some form of color grading right here now how you can get this one going is simple let's say for example a portion of this clip like this we want to color grade this once you select this clip you can go over to the effect section go over to color and then you can do some color correction so once you click over there you'll be able to start making some color grading choices and if this is something you would like to keyframe you can also proceed to start keyframing this as you proceed if you want to animate anything across various parts while working with this or maybe you just want to simply add some keyframes this is also pretty easy as we can do that right here so for this one i'm going to simply use the olive text that we created i'm also going to click right here and simply change this to something like that and let's use a very nicer font like this all right and i'm also going to make this bold so with this, I would be able to animate the olive across this. These things you see right here are your keyframes. So for the keyframes, we can choose to keyframe certain parts that has to do with position. And we can also choose to keyframe certain things that has to do with opacity. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to simply play this all the way to a point like this. And I would want this to travel within the X axis. And if it travels all the way to this point, I would like the opacity to actually reduce to zero. So I'm going to click on this particular button right here and then set this to zero. Now we don't want to have, you know, something that just happens a bit rapidly like this. So maybe we can go ahead and add another opacity right here as 100 so once we proceed to do a simple playback we can get a very reasonable effect happening for us so with this you can start keyframing stuff and making some changes and you can also choose to right click and set this keyframe interpolation you can also choose to select the keyframe and change the interpolation so if you want to set it as linear bezier hold you can also get this one going. If this is also something that you would like to play with, you might also go over to the window section and open up the graph editor. So once we select the graph editor from here, we can easily make some modifications to what we have. And so pretty cool stuff you can do from here. Of course, there are certain limitations you might find while working with this tool. But, you know, as far as it has to do with non-linear video editing, this tool is pretty decent for you to get the job done. So if you're thinking about bringing in audio Audio files video files clips that you can go ahead and start playing with you can simply take a look at how you can get these things up and running by taking a look at the link which is going to be in the description download this tool try it and start playing with it and a huge shout out to chiwi chen ariane seniros tomato way and pipe lina for suggesting the olive editor app for us to review today and this is definitely about it and i would like to know what you guys think about this too in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this then you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace